was the most severe I've ever had. And like I said, I've had it a few times in my travels around the world. Okay, so day one was a Thursday. I woke up and I had a, abdominal pains. In the Navy, we would say we had bubble guts, you know, that bubbly sensation you feel in your stomach, but I didn't think anything of it. I ordered my normal fufu coffee. I drank it, I enjoyed it. A little bit later, I had to use the restroom and that was my first episode. I had an episode of diarrhea. I also had cold and hot flashes. I didn't think it was necessarily norovirus. I thought maybe it was food poisoning. The night before I had some like questionable French onion soup and I thought maybe it was that. So I decided to go ahead and stay in my cabin because I knew norovirus was going around and just medicate myself. I had NyQuil, DayQuil and Advil. And so I started taking that and I decided to just stay in my cabin that day. I believe we were in port uh, St. Martin or Grand Bahama or something like that. But I decided to go ahead and self-isolate that day. Okay, day two was a Friday and it was more of the same frequent episodes of diarrhea. I didn't feel sick, I just had really bad diarrhea. So I decided to continue to self-isolate. I was still self-medicating, but I, I ran out of DayQuil, NyQuil and Advil during this day. And I thought, okay, maybe this is probably the end of it. I felt like I was getting a little better, feeling a little bit stronger. And the next day was gonna be the turnaround day. So I was like, you know, I'll probably be able to do turnaround day with no issue. I think I'm through this. Okay, so now we're at day three, which is a Saturday, and that's a turnaround day. Let me real quick explain what a turnaround day is for those that don't know. So when you do a back-to-back -back cruise, in my case, I was doing a seven-day cruise followed by a seven-day cruise. You go out, you leave on your seven day cruise and you come back, all the people who aren't staying on the cruise have to leave, but the people who are staying on and doing the next cruise also have to disembark the ship and go through immigration and customs again, and then they can reboard the ship. It's a pretty painless process. It usually takes about three hours. You hang out in an area, then they escort you off the ship, then you go through immigration and customs, which is a really easy process. And then they take you to a little holding area until the ship's ready to reboard passengers. And then you reboard the ship. So that's what I was gonna have to do on that day. Okay, now that you know what a turnaround day is, let's jump back into the rest of the story. So now we're on day three. Throughout the entire night, I was struggling. I was waking up constantly. I felt sick the entire night. I was getting worse and worse and worse. I was waking up with frequent episodes of diarrhea. And now I was really, really nauseous. Every time I stood up, I felt like I was gonna vomit. I was gonna puke. I hadn't yet, but I felt like I was going to. I just felt awful. It had taken a turn for the worse. I had no medication now to medicate myself. And I was just dreading having to go wait in Princess Theater for an hour and then disembark the ship, go through immigration, walk around for, that's probably like a half an hour to 45 minutes, and then go have to sit in a waiting area with a bunch of other people, a lot of them elderly, um, risking their health as well as me probably vomiting all over myself over and over again. So at this point, I decided to call medical and inform them of my situation. It was a, probably around 6 a.m. in the morning. So I didn't actually call medical directly. I don't know why they don't include medical. You know, they have dining services, room service. They don't have the medical number on the phones on at least princess ships. I don't know, maybe they do on other ships. They do have an emergency number that you can dial. So I went ahead and dialed that number and right away I said, hey, this is not an emergency. I'm just trying to get a hold of somebody in medical. I believe I have norovirus. I'm really sick. The lady took down my information and then she patched me over to someone else who took down all my symptoms and told me to just wait in the room for now. So that's what I did. I, wait in the room. I waited in the room. Eventually someone showed up and asked me for my passport. They took a picture of my passport. They left and I never had to leave the ship. Thankfully, I'm assuming immigration has some kind of deal with sick people on board. They don't want them walking through immigration either. So somehow I was able to go through immigration without actually having to go through immigration myself. I was able to stay in my cabin. 
I was so thankful. In my mind, I was thinking that they were going to maybe parade the sick off together, like put us all in wheelchairs or something like that. And, you know, take us off the ship, take us through immigration and then just walk us right back on. But that we'd have to physically go. But that wasn't the case. Thankfully, <laughs> I didn't have to leave the ship. The only time I felt halfway decent, I still felt awful. But the only time I didn't feel like I was going to throw up was when I was laying down. So I was glad that I never had to leave my bed in that case. So the next thing that happened was medical called me again and they asked me all kinds of medical questions, like what were my allergies, if I had any history of illnesses, what medications I was taking, things like that to get a medical background on me. I told them I did not have any medications left and they said they would prescribe me some, but they would need to send down a medic to make sure my blood pressure was okay, also to test me for COVID, to make sure I wasn't running a fever, all the things they need to do before they prescribe you medication. So about 20 minutes later, a medic showed up, super, super nice guy, but one of those guys that's too nice in a situation where you're sick, you don't wanna to talk to anybody. You just want them to do their job and go. And he was trying to cheer me up and have a conversation with me. He found out I was a YouTuber and he was a budding YouTube star. He has like a thousand subscribers. I'm definitely gonna to talk to him about YouTube now that I'm healthy. But in that moment, I really didn't wanna talk about how to optimize a YouTube channel. I just wanted some medication. I wanted to be able to go lay down again but he did all my checks. He, he was a great guy, by the way. He was professional and did a great job. Um, but in that moment, I wasn't in the mood to, to have a conversation. Uh, he checked all my vitals, everything was okay. And they prescribed me some medication. The medication showed up, dropped off at my door about an hour later. They prescribed me some Tylenol, since it's better for your stomach than Advil. They gave me anti-diarrhea medicine and an anti-nausea medication. So those were welcome additions. I didn't have any more visits from medical personnel from this point on. I did receive two phone calls a day from medical, one in the morning and one in the evening to check on my symptoms and to see when the last episode happened so they could determine when I could come out of quarantine. I was quarantined at this point, by the way. I'd already been quarantining myself, but I was quarantined officially at this point. Okay, let's discuss my worst episode of this entire sickness, which happened on day three. So once I got the medication, I took it, and you know, that doesn't make you better, especially with something like norovirus, but it does suppress the symptoms, and it was working on me, it was suppressing the symptoms, and it made it where I could drift in and out of sleep, which I really needed. I hadn't slept in forever in a sustainable kind of way. So I was ready to get some sleep. I had moved a trash can near my bed because I was continuously nauseous and I felt like I was gonna throw up. So I made sure I had a trash can next to my bed and I was kind of sitting up with the TV on in the background and I drifted off to sleep. And then I woke up and had a violent episode of vomiting. I vomited everywhere. It was all over myself. Before I knew it, what was going on and could turn over to the trash can, it was all over myself, all over the bed, on the walls. I mean, it looked like a scene from The Exorcist in my bedroom. I felt awful. I jumped out of bed. I went and I took a shower, got myself cleaned up, and then I came back and kind of assessed the damage to the bedroom. I packaged up all of my blankets, including the mattress pad, because it had went through into the mattress pad and I bagged it. I kind of bagged it all up to where none of the vomit was showing. And then I opened my door and my steward happened to be out in the passageway. He knew I was sick. He, he maintained his distance, although he was super brave. He was always like, I don't care. And I'm like, no, 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 please stay back. And uh, I told him what had happened. And if I could get a change of sheets that I would change them. And he said, no, he can't do anything. They have a thing called the heat team. And so he called the heat team and they showed up. It was all these guys in suits. They came in my room. They cleaned everything, the walls, the floors. They sprayed it down with everything. They changed out my towels. They changed out my bedding. I mean, they did everything. My room smelled like a hospital. It was completely sanitary now. Uh, it was kind of crazy what they do. It's a pretty thankless job. I tried to tip them and I don't know if they didn't take the tip money because I was sick and they didn't want money that I was touching or because they, you know, are just, you know, 
heroic guys and they don't really do it for the money. But at some point, I'm going to try to find them again and tip them before I leave the ship because that is a thankless job and I'm sure they have to do it over and over again all day long. But I couldn't be more impressed with their professionalism. They came in, they, they were very methodical. They did what they were supposed to do. They sprayed everything down. My room was super clean when they left and my bed was super comfy again. And it, it was, you know, it was, a, it was <laughs> for as bad of experience as norovirus was, my experience with the ship, the medical team and the heat team was amazing. And I can't speak highly enough about the Caribbean princess's response to my illness. Okay, so let's talk about day four, which was Sunday. So all night I was struggling in and out of sleep. I was going to the bathroom, had more diarrhea. I still felt nauseous and I thought I was headed into another awful day. Eventually I drifted off to sleep and I, when I woke up, I felt like a new person. It's crazy how you can go from good to awful back to good again so quickly. I felt like a new man. I felt great the next day. Medical gave me a call. I told them I was feeling better. And they said, hey, if you don't mind, quarantine for a little while. We'll give you the all clear when it's been 24 hours since your last symptom. And so that's what I did. I was hungry again. I hadn't eaten in like two days, but all I really craved was watermelon. So I gave uh, the dining service is a call because on the app they didn't have an option for just watermelon. I didn't want any of the other fruits. I just craved watermelon for some reason. And so I called them. I said, hey, look, I've had norovirus for a couple days and all I can really eat is watermelon. Do you mind just bringing me a big plate of watermelon? And that's what they did. They brought me this huge plate of watermelon squares. And I found out later that that's a diuretic and you probably shouldn't eat watermelon when you have diarrhea but it didn't do any further damage to me. I didn't have any diarrhea or vomiting at this point on day four. I felt completely healthy. I don't think there was anything left to give, to be honest with you, whether it was vomiting or diarrhea. I don't think I had anything left to give. I think I had given all I could give anyway, but um, the uh, watermelon really hit the spot and thankful for dining services for accommodating me there. I forgot to mention this, but throughout the entire time, I was ordering these big 500 milliliter water bottles as well to my room. I was surviving on just water, big giant jugs of water. Okay, so now we're on day five. It's Monday. It's a full 24 hours since I had my last symptom. Medical called me and said, hey, you're all clear. You can leave your room. But I decided to self-quarantine another day. I didn't want to risk getting somebody else sick. We had a whole new lineup of passengers on board and a lot of elderly people. And so I decided to quarantine one more day just to make sure I didn't get anybody sick. I let my steward know that I was gonna continue to quarantine, but that I was clear. He called the heat team one more time. They came in and did a once over on my room, made sure it was completely norovirus free. Again, I tried to tip them, they would not accept it. So I'm gonna try again at the end of the cruise. I'm gonna try to find those two guys and tip them because again, I can't speak highly enough of what they have to do. <laughs> and so here we are now, we're on day six. <laughs> this is day six. It seems kind of crazy that I just went through all that because I feel so good today. I still don't have a huge appetite, but I am introducing food back into my diet slowly, but surely mostly fruits and vegetables. And I lost eight pounds. I went from 190 to 181 pounds over a five day period, which is crazy to me. I've been drinking tons of water because I know I got super dehydrated. All right, so now we're gonna talk about something I know you're curious about. What did it cost me to use those medical services? You know, I got prescribed medication. I had heard horror stories about it costing thousands of dollars to use medical on a cruise ship. So in my case, you know, someone came to my room, checked on me, you know, did all the medical stuff. Every day they would call me twice a day. A nurse would call me to make sure I was okay. And if I needed any more medication, I was, I got a whole round of medication. I told you I got three medications. I got Tylenol, an anti-diarrhea medication and an anti-nausea medication. And the grand total price for all of that, 
and four cents. That's right, four dollars and four cents. So, I mean, I'll let you know if any other charge shows up on my bill, but usually Princess is pretty good about putting charges on right away, and I haven't been charged anything else other than that four dollars and four cents for the medication. That kind of blows me away. I thought it was going to be at least like 20 or 30 dollars, maybe even hundreds of dollars. You know, when you factor in all, you know, the time of the medic and the nurse, I thought, you know, maybe they're going to charge me for that. They didn't charge me for that. You know, what do you